Okay, so I'm going to work through these basketball player problems that we did at the end of Classwork 15 because these are really good examples of how to use z-scores to test hypotheses. Okay. And this is going to apply for both if we're asking about probabilities for individuals and if we're talking about probabilities for samples of people. So let's go ahead and start with individuals. So suppose we have a population of adult male basketball players, let's pretend it's the NBA, and we know the height of every player in the NBA. So we know the data for the entire population. The mean height is 190 centimeters, and the standard deviation of their heights is 7.2 centimeters. The heights are normally distributed, which is often the case with body measurements. We want to know What's the probability of randomly choosing a player from this population that has a height greater than 195 centimeters? So I want you to notice a couple things. Here I have mu and sigma because, again, we're talking about an entire population of people. We also want to end up with some sort of probability as our answer. So I'm going to go ahead and start out by just drawing what's going on here. What's going on in this population? So I know that it is normally distributed because it says so in the problem. So there's my shape. I'm going to draw in my center, which is the mean, which is 190 centimeters. Let's put that in there. And then I'm going to draw in my standard deviation, which I see over here is 7.2 centimeters. So this kind of shows what my population looks like. Now, in order to answer this question, we're going to have to use either a Z formula or a T formula. So let me just write the different options that we have up here so we can see them. So Z, we have these two versions. We have this version and we have this version that has the standard error on the bottom. So those are our Z options. The T options look very much the same. Let me do them over here. So the T looks very much the same, except instead of sigma, we have S, right? Because we're estimating the standard deviation based on the sample, divided by square root of n. So we have to figure out which of these four formulas are we going to use in this case. Now, the first thing I want to know I want to know, is it Z or T? So to answer this, I want to answer, do I have sigma or do I have S? If you look back at our problem, we are given sigma. It's for the whole population. So this means that I'm going to do a Z. My second question is, am I going to compare to this distribution over here, the population distribution, or am I going to have to compare it to the SDOM? Okay, so we want to know, am I doing the population or SDOM? So to answer that, I have to look at who is this question asking about? Okay, so if we look at this question, it says, what is the probability of a randomly choosing a player, one person? So since we're just talking about one person, we want to compare people with people. So if we have a person, we're going to compare to the population. If we have a sample, we would compare a sample with other samples in the SDOM. So in this case, since we're talking about one person, we're going to do the population, which means that we're just going to have to divide by the standard deviation of the population, by sigma, not by standard error. So now I have everything I need in order to get the right z-score. Okay. So I know it's going to be this formula here because I'm doing a z, and I know that I'm just dividing by the sigma because I'm just comparing to regular population distribution. So let me go ahead and start my formula. So z equals. Now this x number that we're looking at right here, this is the data point that we're interested in. 
Okay, so this is the data point from the problem. So this is saying, what's the probability of a randomly chosen player having a height greater than 195? So the 195 is my x. Let me go ahead and just put that over. x equals 195. I also need mu. So it helps to know, in this case, what is my mu? Well, mu is given in the problem, and it's 190. The last piece I'm going to need is sigma on the bottom. So what is sigma? Sigma is also given here, 7.2. So I can put that there. So then it's just plugging all the pieces in. So x minus mu divided by sigma. So here's x minus mu is 190 divided by sigma, which is 7.2. So I know this is going to work out to, well, 195 minus 190 is going to be 5 on top, divided by 7.2. So let's see if I can pull up my calculator here. Uh, let's see, calculator right there. So I had 5 divided by 7.2 and that week equals to 0 0.694. So let me come back to my, oops, right here. So this equaled to 0 0.694. So this is my z-score that's associated with a score of, or a height of 195. So if we look back at our drawing, we can see, like if we imagine, right, if we went up one whole standard deviation, that would mean this is 197.2, and the z-score that goes with that would be 1, because the z-score here, the mean would be 0. So if you think about where 195 is on this drawing, it's probably about maybe right there, right? It's not to 197, it's not 190. It's somewhere in between, maybe a little closer to 197. And so does this make sense that we would get 0.694? It is 0.694 between 0 and 1 and a little closer to 1? Yeah. So the z-score for that is 0.694. Now, the question is not asking for the z-score. The question is asking, what is the probability? So we have to do one more step before we have the answer for the probability. So to get the probability, we're going to take this z-score, 0 0.694, and we're going to look it up in a z-table. So let's see here. So here's my z-table. Since I want to do the positive side, I'm going to look over here. Okay, so let me find 0 0.694. So I'm going to have to round. I don't have 0 0.694, so let's round to 0 0.69. So here's my 0 0.6, and then the 9 is up here, so 0 0.69. So let me see, where do these two things cross? So I'm looking at this number right here. Kind of hard to see, this one. 0.7549. Because here's the 0 0.6 and here's the 9. So 0 0.7549. So we looked up, and let's bring our pen back. So zero, zero point, I already forgot what it was, unfortunately. <laughs> Seven, five, four, nine. Oops. 
zero point seven five four nine. Come on, drop in. But there's one thing I want you to keep in mind. So this is a probability. But what this probability is, is it's not actually the probability we want. Because if we look back at the problem, it says, what's the probability of randomly choosing a player from this population that has a height greater than 195? So on our drawing, I want you to think about where is greater than 195. All right, so we said, here's 195. If we want to go higher, greater than 195, we're looking for this side, right? Higher than or greater than 195. So we're looking for the right side of this curve. If you look back at our Z table, what's shaded here is the left side of our curve, not the right side. So this seven, or 0.7549 is really telling us this area, 0.7549. Since we want the other side, we're going to take 1 and subtract the 0.7549 to get this area, the right side. So let's go to our calculator. So let's do 1 minus 0.7549 equals 0.2451. Okay. 0.2451. So that means that this area right here on the right side or higher or taller is 0.2451, which is actually what we're looking for in this case. So we would need to take 1 minus 0.7549, this is the left side, equals 0.2451, which is equal to the right side, and this is our answer that we're looking for. Right, makes more sense. This is about 25%, 24% of the curve, and the area to the left is the 75%. So the answer to our question, what is the probability of randomly choosing a player from this population that has a height greater than 195? So that probability is 0 0.75 sorry, <laughs> I ran after I said none that, is 0 0.2451, or you can also write it as a percentage, so 24.51%. So almost a 25% chance that if we pull a random basketball player here, that they're going to be at least 195 centimeters tall. So that's our first example, right, where we're looking at individual basketball players. The other kind of example that we see is what if instead of looking at an individual, we were really interested in having a whole sample of basketball players. So as before, suppose the heights of individual players are normally distributed with 190 is the mean and 7.2 is the, cent, uh, the standard deviation. So we still have this population So we got our population distribution. Let me label this with 190 is here, and then it's a little lopsided, but that's my 7.2 standard deviation. Now this question is ask, asking, what's the probability? So again, we want to use, we're going to have to use our z table at some point of randomly choosing 25 players, not just one player, but 25 players with a mean height of 195 or taller. So I'm not asking about one individual person this time. I'm asking about like, here's my group of 25 people, my n equals 25, and my sample mean is 195 or greater. Okay. 
So since I'm talking about a whole sample of people this time, I can't compare a sample with individual people. I'm going to have to compare a sample with other samples. So the distribution that we know that is made up of lots of sample means is our little friend, the SDOM, right? The sampling distribution of means is made up of a bunch of sample means. So if I want to know what's the probability of a sample mean, I got to compare it to other sample means. Now the central limit theorem tells me that this guy is going to be normally distributed because 25 players, is, that's a big enough sample size. Central limit theorem also tells me that the mean of my SDOM is going to be the same as the mean of my population. So I can just put that 190 right down onto my SDOM. What's going to be different in this case is how spread out it is. Because remember, SDOMs get skinnier and skinnier the bigger your sample size is. So I need to find the standard error in order to figure out how skinny or wide this SDOM is. Since I'm comparing to the SDOM, I'm going to be using where is it? this version of the formula this time. Because on the bottom, this part, that's just the standard error formula. I'm still using Z because I still have the same, I still have a sigma. So I know I'm going to use Z because I have sigma. That's our first question. And then this time I'm doing a sample. So I compare to the SDOM, which means I divide by the standard error instead. Okay, so let me go ahead and write down that new formula down here. So I'm going to be using this formula. Z equals the sample mean minus the population mean divided by standard error, which is going to be sigma divided by the square root of n. So it's always helpful. I really encourage you, once you've got your formula picked out, label all the things that you know. Okay, so I know the sample mean I'm interested in. The sample mean I'm interested in, let me write these over here, comes from my problem. It's asking about the mean height of 195. That's what it's asking about. So that 195 is going to be my sample mean. The population mean we had before, and it's the same here. My population mean is equal to 190. Sigma is given 7.2. And the last thing I'm going to need is n. And so remember, n always means your sample size. So how many people are in this sample? 25 people. That's my n. So that's going to give me all the information I need in order to compute the Z that goes with this problem. So let's plug them in. So we've got Z equals 195 minus 190 divided by 7.2 divided by the square root of 25. Now I always want to do this bottom part first. Okay. So the square root of 25 I can do in my head. I know that square root of 25 is 5. So let me just kind of, I know that's going to be 5, but I don't know off the top of my head what 7.2 divided by 5 is. So let me figure out. Here's my calculator. Come on. So 7.2 divided by 5 equals 1.44. So let me come back to my problem. So I know this bottom part is going to be 1.44. So what I'm looking for here, and I can do this top part in my head, 195 minus 190 is going to be 5 divided by 1.44. So let me come back to my calculator. Sorry, my computer's being stubborn. Here we go. 5 divided by 1.44. 
I get 3.47. Come on, you can do it, computer. Hmm, come on. Wait, I almost got it. 3.47, 3.47, Okay, so my Z in this case is equal to 3.47. So let's take a moment and draw that out on where our on our SDOM so we can sort of visualize where it is and make sure that we're going to get the right um, kind of probability, right? So we figured out this standard error is equal to 1.44 because that's just this bottom part. So that means if I come one standard deviation out, that's going to be 191.44. If I go a second standard deviation out, I'm going to add 194 again, right? Sort of like hopping over to the next one. So that's going to be 192.88. If I go one more out, that's going to be whatever 192.88 plus 1.44 is. I think it's 194 point something. Okay. And then if I go even one more out, I'm getting way out here. To where we're in the tiny tiny tail this will be I think 195 point something All right so if you can imagine this tail is just getting closer and closer and closer and closer to that line that horizon All right so what we're looking for is where's 195 in here it's gonna be right about in the middle here because 3.47 it's gonna be between 1 2 three and four standard deviations up. So it's gonna be at the 3.47 mark. So the probability, the area we're looking for is this tiny little area right under there. Right, if you can imagine, if you could zoom way, way, way in, there's this tiny little area under that curve. Because again, we're talking about a mean height of 195 or taller. So we wanna to go to the tall side, which is to the right. Okay, so we're looking for this little tiny probability right under here. So when we look it up in our z-table, it should be a really, really small number, right? Because we know it's going to be this tiny sliver. So let's go ahead and look up our 3.47 in our z-table. 3.47. We're still on this right side because we're still in the positive area. Let me just kind of erase this stuff so it doesn't get too confusing. Okay. So we're looking for 3.47. So if I come down to 3.4, it's like at the very bottom here, 3.4. And then 3.47 means I want to go to where the 7 is. So 3.4 goes this way. And then the 7, 3.47 is going to come down, and it's going to be this one right here at the bottom, 0.9997. So remember, I said we're looking for a little tiny piece. 0.9997, that's 99.97% out of 100% is not a tiny piece. So what's going on here is, again, we're, we're talking about these numbers in the table are the left side. What our question is asking for is or taller. We want the right side. This is what we're looking for. So if we know this whole thing adds up to 100% and this side is 0.9997, 99.97%, then to get the side that we want, we're just again going to take one minus 0.9997 and that's going to equal this area on the right side. So if we do 1 minus 0.9997 it should be 0 0.0003. Let's double check. 1 minus 0.9997 equals 0 0.0003. 
So is that a very small number? More like what we were expecting? Yeah, that one makes more sense. Right, so we actually get 0 0.0003, which is the probability of the right side. So that is going to be our final answer. So remember, what is the probability of randomly choosing a team of 25 players and the mean height is 195 or taller? So the probability, or P, is equal to 0 0.0003. And that will be our final answer. Because again, we found the left was 0.9997. But since we want the right, you go 1 minus the left. And that's what gave us our answer right here. So hopefully that helped you out. So if you see these problems, keep in mind, we're only doing Z problems by hand. So if you have one of these problems, it's probably a Z problem. Um, just take a look and try to remember how do you know if it's Z or T, right? If it's Z or T, you want to know, do you have sigma or S? If you're given sigma, you're going to do a Z. And then how you're doing the formula, if you're doing kind of the simple version, just dividing by sigma, or if you're doing the complicated version where you're dividing by the standard error, right, this guy right here is just standard error. That's going to depend on if it's asking about one individual, a person you compare to the population, a sample you compare to this SDOM, the sampling distribution of means. Okay, so hopefully that was helpful for you. Let me know if you have any other questions.